Hi guys, I just stripped my T7 down for some deep cleaning and maintenance and look things over. So what a better uh, opportunity to make that 50,000 km review. I'll take you through all the wear and tear of the bike, the maintenance I've done, services, all the things I've learned about the bike and perhaps I can share some experience with you. And in the end I'll answer a few questions that you guys asked in the comment section. It's over three years ago now that I pre-ordered this bike after seeing some press material and some test rides uh, online and I just fell in love with the looks and the concept of, of the bike. At the time I was on a BMW GS1200 Adventure, the fattest bike around, and I wanted to trade in some comfort to get a lighter and more nimble bike to take off-road because off-road is, is, was the thing that grew on me and I really wanted to do more of that. So that's why I got the T7. So I come from the big behemoth of a bike down to this one, uh, this much lighter. It's different if you come from a lighter bike and up, I guess. To be honest, I'm not much for research and numbers and, and the logics of things. I, uh, if I feel it's right, I act on that. And so I ordered it on the spot and it was delivered in October 2019. I've given this bike a real good test, I think, because I've ridden it every month through the whole year um, since I got it. Summer through winter and salty roads, uh, hot, dry, wet, muddy, um, even in ocean water. And uh, yeah, so it's been through a lot and some nasty off-road also if, uh, that you might have seen. Since I was so early, I got the introduction price. I paid uh, 10,000 euros for this bike. I added some extras and the, some are still there and some are I removed. Yeah, so 50,000 kilometers. So let's start going through everything. Yeah, there's quite a lot to go through. So uh, it will be a lengthy vid video for sure. So let's start with the health journal of this bike. And when it comes to the maintenance, Let's start off with the scheduled services. I let an authorized dealer all do all of that. Uh, and that's yeah, the complete checkups of the bike and do the things I don't want to do, like the scheduled two, uh, 20,000 kilometer uh, spark plug change, um, 40,000 kilometer um, valve checks and everything. And also the, the diagnostics and, and because they can detect if there are some sensors or whatever that are failing. So, so that's good, I let them do that. The valves, when they checked it, they did that once. Uh, it was all uh, within specs, so no adjustment needed. And the idling and the engine, everything runs perfectly. It starts uh, uh, really easy, so there's no indications that something is wrong there. Yeah, so so basically, the, the dealer does the scheduled services. But then I do a lot myself here in the shed, and mainly that's replacing wear parts. And to start off that, we have the brake pads. I changed my first set of brake pads at around 10,000 kilometers, which is quite far compared to many others. Maybe I don't brake as much, not sure. Um, and I switched to sintered pads instead because they are harder and rougher and tougher and for off-road and, and all of that according to what I read. So I had those the next uh, over 20,000 kilometers and when, is, when I reached 30,000 kilometers I noticed the backside of sintered. And that's I had ran my brake discs down under specifications so now I had to change uh, brake discs and that's quite costly uh, 300 euros for uh, the, the three discs uh, on the bike so I changed that and back to the organic ones so that uh, yeah it, it it's uh, easier and cheaper to to change the pads than the discs all right new position okay so then every 20,000 kilometers, approximately, I've uh, replaced the drive kit, the front and rear sprocket and the chain. 
Um, I changed them every 20,000, but I could have run a lot longer on them. I uh, did that because I was going on, on uh, long trips and things like that. Um, so standard, it comes with uh, 15 uh, sprocket teeth uh, in the front and 46 in the rear. Uh, what I have now is uh, 15 standard, but then 48 in the rear, uh, so that's more. And that is really nice for going off-road. Uh, you can use the second gear from, from start and go quite far up. So technical off-road, you don't need more than second gear. Um, but now I'm going on a long trip again pretty soon. Um, and I'm, I'm changing now back to uh, 46 uh, teeth in the back because it revs uh, higher and it feels a bit stressed. If you're going in 100, 120, you can certainly notice the difference. And uh, for a long ride, I want to go a little bit uh, more calmly on the bike and, and yeah, fuel consumption and everything like that. So going back to standard there. I also changed the air filter. So I got this foam filter instead because it's easier to just clean it uh, like I just did. So it's uh, nice and clean again and I can do that on my own quite frequently. Um, so, but then there are other options, of course. You can yeah, have a pre-filter and people cut these. I haven't done that, um, just added this and is, I'm good to go. So when it comes to the regular maintenance that I do on the bike, that's pretty much it. Then of course I, I correct uh, stuff that happened uh, in between, but more of that soon. So yeah, um, I changed tires of course, but uh, yeah, that's a different story. So that's the normal uh, maintenance, I guess. But then I've had some uh, incidents and problems happening, so we can go through uh, those. At 25,000 kilometers, I noticed the back end started wobbling a bit and then crunching and so on. So it was one of the bearings um, in the rear um, that gave up. Uh, so we had to install new bearings and I did everything, all the bearings, both rear, three bearings there, uh, two in front and all uh, the seals also. So that's all fresh. It is, and it's not looking pretty. <laughs> My God. Okay, so we broke it a bit by hammering, but I think it was broken. Yes, it was. Can you turn the inside? Oh, no, it's... It sounds like a coffee grinder. grinder. <laughs> and what caused that so early, I'm quite sure that it was my insensitive use of the uh, pressure washer. So uh, yeah, I wasn't careful enough. I've learned the hard way to be, uh, be more careful, not to spray directly into the, uh, to the bearings. Um, the latest thousands of kilometers also, I have a new thing that is when it's cold and I don't give it time to warm up and I put in first gear and when I ride away I heard this quirking sound <laughs> uh, when, when, it, uh, when I engage the gear uh, let, letting go of the clutch and it does like that the first three four times I, I uh, engage the uh, the drive through the clutch and and the first times and then it goes away so But I read up on that and there are many people having the same problem on the t7 and all other bikes also and it's it's based on the uh, Clutch plates sticking together a bit and and so when you first on a cold bike uh, engage the clutch, they sort of, yeah, they are stuck together and needs to come loose. Um, and to rem remedy that, you could either take uh, the clutch apart and soak the discs in, 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 in more oil because they need to be soaked and sometimes they're badly soaked. 
but most have just changed the engine oil from uh, Yamalube to something else, Castrol and, and things like that, and that went away. So, um, yeah, it's, it's nothing serious, I'm told, and, and I'm going to change oil now and see if that sorts it out. Next problem that is quite uh, known also, especially on the earlier versions, uh, this is the first um, model of, of the T7, is corrosion. And the main part uh, for, or area for corrosion is the fuel tank. Here, let's see if you guys can see this. I'll, I'll arrange something, hang on. Okay, so here we have the fuel tank. Uh, and the problem is with corrosion, mainly uh, there's a plate here. I um, hope you can see that uh, here. And it's welded on top, but it's not completely fixed here. So there's a sensitive spot here where the uh, two metal plates joins around here. So you will notice, and you can see that just with the flashlight uh, looking in here uh, when it's on the bike also, uh, these joints. And they corroded for me, so there's rust along the edges here. Okay, so I, I found this um, anti-corrosion uh, potion or liquid and I treated the bike with ACF50, like that. And I think it worked uh, quite well, so I'm doing that once a year or something like that. And also on other parts. Yeah, so the, the fuel tank is the most problematic part when it comes to corrosion. I've heard that there are new uh, tanks out there now that uh, in the yeah, subsequent versions of the T7 um, or models, they have done some things, I'm not sure what. Yeah, other parts, uh, there are some other corrosion um, areas on the bike, but mainly it's uh, a few bolts that corrode, the bolts in the, in the brake discs, for instance, and things like that. But nothing serious, it's, it's just on the surface. Yeah, so those are the only problems that I have had with the bike, so uh, I think that's quite uh, limited and yeah, what can you expect? Nothing is 100% perfect. So, let's talk about wear and tear. Uh, how has the bike held up? And as you may know, um, I don't have much uh, protection on my bike. Uh, I don't have crash bars, for instance. And I think that's because my previous bike looked like a plumber's wet dream or something like that. Yeah, so the most important uh, protection, of course, are the hand guards because they take a lot of beating. Um, so these are my old crash guards and yeah, so they take the, the fall. Um, I have the GP Mochi. I have the skid plate that uh, goes out a little bit on the side here and that protects some and I have the engine covers from uh, GB Racing. Yeah, so, so with that it stays quite slim with the crash bar, uh, let's say six, seven centimeters out on each side, you're more, more prone to hit the crash guards, of course, when it falls. Normally, uh, the bike doesn't get to the ground. I could be uh, unlucky and have something stick in there and stones and whatnot, but yeah, I'm continuing uh, this way and I like it a lot. So what else has broken and scratched and uh, whatnot on the bike? It's all over here, so let's take a look at those. Oi! <laughs> Okay, so 
Okay, let's go over the bike. Um, here, uh, there's a lot of where this paint goes off quite uh, quickly. And when it's off, you can see already because it's been wet, perhaps you see it, it's some corrosion on there. Always comes there and then I yeah, take it away or go riding. Um, yeah, um, there, gear, gear lever, a little bit rust on that. Here I have the GB Racing uh, engine covers. You can see they get a few scratches, not much, but some, so they did their job. In the front, we have the fork protectors. Um, they broke off here. It goes uh, all the way down here to this uh, little screw. Um, yeah, I have nylon screws there, there and there. So that is something you should do. This just sits here quite firmly. So I have not done anything with it. I don't have a headlight protector and there's not much of damage to it either. So yeah, I have some stuff coming for that. So it will be kept like that. Uh, we have the tank. Um, it's on the sides. I do have some, yeah, now it's just uh, full of print, but I do have some small scratches. Uh, this is from my uh, hand guards actually, uh, when I had adjusted them wrong. On the other side also, they uh, caught up with the tank and scratched it, but not much else. Other side, perhaps. Like so, yeah, a few scratches. Uh, side panels. Without the engine guards, they look quite nice. Same thing here, not much, just small, tiny, tiny stuff. The GP Muchi uh, skid plate. Um, quite, it takes a lot of beating, which it takes well. It's been through a lot, this one. Yeah, so. There's a big one, but nothing even close to uh, damaging it. So what more do we have? So, I mean, based on the way I've been riding, the distance and where, I think uh, this lady is in quite good shape. Not much uh, to mention about things breaking or uh, yeah, falling apart or anything, and it's been a really trusty steed uh, for sure. Uh, things that could happen, of course, there's always a lot. We have the bad design of the exhaust hanger, which is welded to the subframe. It could get the bash and be uh, sort of bent in and even crack in the welds or bend the subframe or things like that. I heard a lot of complaints about it, but, and it happened, but not too many that I've heard of. So real quick about the suspension. Uh, what I've done is I upgraded the rear spring to 85 Newton per millimeter for a weight uh, of a, for a rider of 85 kilos, somewhere there. That's what Rally Raid recommended when I gave them my numbers. Uh, I added five millimeter spacers as preload in the fork. Uh, a better option would be to get uh, springs for my weight on, on the forks also, but that's, I got given them for free, so I just did that. Um, I also set up the rebound and compression um, to my liking, as shown in my previous video. So regarding suspension, that's, uh, yeah, I, I now like the suspension on this bike for what I'm doing. And I'm not going extreme uh, enduro. I want to go on uh, trips and up in the high mountains on bad roads and stuff like that. But I'm not doing pull tares uh, stunts. 
Okay, let's go through the list of my modifications that I've done or added and so on. Um, I started off with buying central stand uh, that came off because there was like a big anchor grabbing onto things when I got stuck in mud and roots and things like that. Perhaps there are other uh, better solutions than the uh, OEM central stand, but I took it off and yeah, um, I'm okay with that. I have a trail stand now instead. Uh, I also had the OEM, the, the, the first big um, luggage rack. Um, here that uh, Yamaha had it was 12 kilos so and big and bulky so I took that off uh, the things uh, that I kept are the lead blinkers the side grips uh, on the panels and the heated grips from Yamaha um, perhaps the the worst performing uh, heated grips on the market but they do the trick good enough, at least. I don't uh, feel like buying something new. They get warm, but I cannot uh, prepare bacon on them. Yeah, and I have the skid plate from GP Mucci I, uh, that you already saw. You also saw the nylon screws on, uh, on the fork covers and also the engine covers that I showed you. I added that. Adventure spec side racks. I added those to keep my uh, yeah soft luggage that are just hanging over here to be a little bit more stable so they don't swing in and out uh, uh, on the wheel. As you saw, I have the foam filter, uh, but I also added the Shido lithium battery. It takes two kilos off the weight of the bike, so that's a huge saving in weight. And it has been working nice. It has uh, a little bit more cranking power and so on. So yeah, I like it. The tail tidy initially from uh, T7 Rally. Uh, it was too weak so uh, and it broke. So yeah, Seymour did a new one uh, for me, inspired by the angles and stuff like that. So I could reuse some stuff. So this is a Seymour Nomad Sweden version of tail tidy. I have these uh, new foot pegs. Um, they are much wider and they are lower. Uh, I added them because I got them from free from uh, Dragos. Thank you, Dragos, uh, when we were in Romania. And I like them. I have no idea which brand or anything, but they work great. I like the lower ones because it gives me a little bit more relaxed. Uh, sitting position and also when standing I'm a bit lower over the bike yeah not sure if that's better but yeah I like them and then we have the crown jewel uh, added recently the Scots uh, stabilizer steering dampener and it's mounted with the triple clamp motor um, mounting kit there because that allows you to uh, mount it without taking off the the bearings or, or the the top nut there it just uh, uh, attaches here and you yeah screw it uh, together instead i really noticed a difference actually uh, i wasn't sure but uh, since the t7 comes without any steering dampener at all uh, in this uh, standard version uh, it's a bit uh, sensitive, especially if you go on rocky trails, bigger rocks or deep gravel, things like that. You uh, yeah, wiggle a bit with the, with the handlebars and, and you get a bit tense. Since adding this, uh, I've, I feel much more stable. The, my arms and shoulders are much more relaxed because it takes a lot of... Yeah, it feels much more as if it's on rails, even though it's uh, quite unstable and jerky on the, uh, on the surface. It's pricey as hell. Um, 700 euros, something like that. Um, I did some domestic money la laundry uh, to uh, hide it from the family, so it just appeared. Um, so yeah, I can teach you some tricks in a different video. Yeah, the, the mirrors 
from uh, Rally Motor in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I like them because they get out of the way. You don't have these big things here and uh, reduce a little bit of, of uh, turbulence. And they're probably not legal in all the countries, but uh, had no problems so far. And yeah, they work and they're stable. Oh yeah, I um, changed to a new uh, exhaust. Sounds great. I don't want it to be louder. Uh, I just, first of all, I want to have it smaller. I want it to uh, be lighter. This is 2.7 kilos lighter. So with the battery, I should be uh, almost five kilos lighter uh, already. So yeah, I, I like it. Uh, the sound not too loud and weight saving. It also makes it less prone to uh, touch the swing if uh, I accidentally break, um, bend it or something. Yeah, so I added a lot because uh, yeah, I had it so long and I enjoy uh, making some mods. But not all of these things are must-haves. The must-haves that I think if I were to buy a new T7 would be number one real handguards because the or original ones will break if you fall for sure um, get a, at least the rear shock spring to your weight possibly ever even the fork would be good even though i haven't done that get the sturdy bash plate uh, it will save you because there's a lot of rocks to skid on out there and nylon screws perhaps the cheapest mod that you can get and still pay for, um, for the fork covers. Um, because if you hit a rock and they break off and, and so on, they can get stuck. It can break off the head of the screw. And if it's the uh, stainless steel ones screwed into aluminum, that which is the case of the, when you get the bike, they will be a bitch to uh, get out of there. So get the nylon screws. If they break, they break and you can easily get them out again. Yeah, and that's all you need in my opinion. Um, you can add whatever else that you need with luggage and crash bars and stuff like that. But I would start with that. Okay, that's my part of the review, I think. It's held up good. It's... Um, 50,000 kilometers now and it will go much further than that without a doubt so just keep changing the wear parts and uh, yeah it will go forever I'm sure so uh, let's take up the letter box and uh, see what you guys have asked for questions so I picked out the questions that sort of is not already covered mostly in what I've already said so Let's start with uh, Philip Ledoux. He asks, common criticism is top heaviness. Did top heaviness decrease? Does in the sense that experience counterbalance the top heaviness uh, of the fuel tank and everything? My T7 is not top heavy compared to other bikes, perhaps. Uh, but I haven't compared that many other bikes. I went from my BMW to this one. That's what it felt like. I, I was good. And with experience, I've ridden this bike so much now I can handle it. And I, I never thought it was top heavy in a sense that, yeah, maybe I didn't know better, but it never was a problem for me. Okay, Marcus Lehrer uh, asks, uh, would you buy the same bike again? Absolutely, I would buy this exact bike with 50,000 Ks on the, on the odometer. Um, absolutely. There are so many new bikes now out there. The Ducatis and the Husqvarna Nordens and the new KTMs and the, yeah, there's heaps of them now. But I'm so happy with this one and I, I like the, it sort of feels like me. So I'm not, not looking any other way. So if I were to get a new bike, which would be in the case of crashing this one, I would replace it with a uh, exactly similar one. Shirokazama 
he asks, uh, wheel still straight? Some bikes, they seem to bend quite easily. The wheels are straight. I actually tested and rotated and said the, the rims are, are even. Uh, Munira Ingavi asks, do you, what do you think about the OEM front suspension and rear shock? Is it capable of taking over tough roads such as the Pymir Highway and the Road of Bones with luggage? Yeah, spring up to the weight that you want uh, or going to carry and for sure. ILMQRS asks, one, has the bike met your expectations? Yes, and exceeded them. Two, how do you cope with the tragic top heaviness? Just reading that up because that's on everybody's mind. I'm ignorant of the top heaviness. Just ride for God's sake. Manu Ur, he asks, hi, is the gear shifting gets getting smoother by time? Rear brake system uh, beds in by time. I'm at 1100 Ks and these things just the same as on zero kilometer spike. Um, brakes, front are good, rear is mushy and it's the same as it uh, always been. Uh, gear shifting um, has been the same, but then I added the RVS technology uh, engine treatment uh, thing because I was curious. Uh, some people say it's snake oil, but uh, I, I think it did something because I cannot feel any difference to the engine after that. But the gear shifting has been become smoother. It goes much easier between the, the gears. All right, moving on. Chris Hong Wang asks, Do you did you bend the exhaust inward so far? No, I did not. Um, should you go for the high exhaust? Uh, you should go for the high exhaust or lower exhaust mainly to get the new um, fastening of, of the exhaust holder, I guess, because uh, detach it from the bike a bit. Um, but it doesn't have to be high for that. Um, perhaps I will do it, not sure. Darren O'Connor asks, what other bikes, if any, did you test ride before choosing the T7? Um, only the bike I had, uh, the BMW GS 1200 Adventure, that's what I rode and I bought this, as I mentioned, um, just from the brochure, if, you, if I may. So, none, really. And gut feeling, and it was right. Um, worst thing. FQ Ras or something asks, worst thing about the Teneris 700? This is uh, subjective, I guess, but uh, yeah, the exhaust hanger is, hasn't been a problem, but it's a worry. Um, it could use a little bit more ground clearance, actually. Some of the competitors have a bit more ground clearance because, yeah, I can feel it. Uh, yeah. It, it would be nice. And then um, sometimes tubes are the worst thing, especially when you get a flat tire. So I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, switch to tubeless. Uh, I would not do a conversion because I've seen that they failed. Uh, and yeah, that would be a worry also. So I would get tubeless rims and the whole kit, I guess. But we go in a group and we can help each other and change the bloody tubes if needed. John B asks, fuel economy about 0 0.45, uh, that would be 4.5 um, liters per 100 kilometers. I think that we have a different system in Sweden, about uh, 4.5. Um, the best fuel economy I had was 3.8 in uh, Romania when we just cruised through uh, some villages and stuff like that. And the most on a fuel tank about 5.2. Um, dashboard readability, no problem at all. Super clear dashboard. Is it vibrating? Yeah, it is, but I have a stabilizer, so that's easily uh, done. 
Uh, Sam Hill, would you go with tubeless tires wheels, uh, as I mentioned? Scott Euler or chain for chain? No, Scott Euler for me. Um, I don't see the need. Um, like that. Reduced clutch lever pull. Um, I may, it's not a problem for me. Heated grips. Yada yada. High front fender. Don't see the need for that. I like it with the low. Kusong Wang asks, also, would you consider World Raid if you're going to get another T7? If I would get another T7, I would get the standard version. I don't want the extra weight and all the stuff. I, I like this slim one and I'm, I'm soon under 200 kilos. So I don't want to start over at 220. Uh, I like this one. Um, JJ. JJ Tiger, did you change your fuel tank? No, it's the standard one um, with rust and everything. Goatman86, how is the chain guide if you have one? I do have a chain guide. The chain guide, I forgot to mention, I have the Yamaha OEM chain guide um, and it works well. Uh, swing arm and chain slider, how are they holding up? Actually, I don't see hardly anywhere on them, so holding up really good. Uh, Michael Ferhar, how did you, <laughs> how did your love develop in those 50 Ks? Uh, have you grown closer? Have you ever had a fight? Have you ever thought of getting rid of her? This is the perfect ma marriage. Uh, I, I wish that everything in my life was as... Uh, stable as my relationship to my T7, for sure. Pete F, how's it for, uh, how is it for riding distance if needed? Comfy saddle, position, etc. If needed, I, I, not only if needed, I, I, I'd like to go on super long trips. The last one was 8,500 kilometers long in a month and soon we'll do a uh, 13,000 kilometer ride uh, on this bike and I do that any day and I have a great uh, ergonomy on the bike and I have the standard seat and perhaps I'm an iron butt but I have no problem at all with it. Uh, Jess T, total costs of everything you've spent on the bike since then. Maintenance parts, upgrades, I don't want to know. I, I don't want to dig in that. Uh, I threw the receipts away and let's forget about it. Avin Andersen asks, Hey, har du haft service på dämparna ändå? Have you had service on uh, the su suspension? No, but it's due time. It's 50,000 kilometers and I should get them to uh, uh, suspension service uh, shop or do it myself somehow, but some things are good for the pros. So that's that, I think. I covered a lot and if you're still here, thanks for watching that. Um, thinking if there's anything else to add, but yeah, the next project on the bike that I'm eagerly awaiting now is the new rally tower. So the Full, the whole uh, headlight and everything here is going away uh, because I like to have the Carpe Iter up here and uh, it's one kilo and uh, it's too heavy. So the whole thing here is bolted in a screw down here on both sides. That's one bolt here that has all the momentum from this wiggling up and down and it came loose and the whole front goes up and down and when it's tight uh, the whole thing is actually wobbling because of that weight up there so i don't want to move the display to the handlebar or anything i want it there so the new tower will be rigidly fastened into the uh, frame of, of the bike and fully support the weight up here so i can have the carpe and still this part here and uh, as a bonus, I get a lot of more lights in the front and stuff like that. So uh, look forward to that. That will be a 
video for sure. It will um, <laughs> take or rearrange the so well-known face of the T7, but it will make it a bit unique for sure. So, I uh, hope you liked this video. It's, uh, it was intended for a lot of different people. Some are looking to purchase uh, a T7, some just want to look ahead and, and see their rel uh, reliability and yeah, the way I use it, uh, how did that affect the bike. Um, not everyone uh, rides the same way I do, so of course things will differ. You will have other things happening to you, but yeah, I am super happy with the bike and I hope to ride it until 200,000 kilometers. That's my goal. I will never sell this T7 uh, because no one will pay what it's worth. Uh, all right. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye bye. So if you want to learn to do some maintenance yourself, like uh, the change tires and the drive kit and things like that, bearings change, I have a playlist for that that you can check out here. So go in and yeah, knock yourself out. See ya.